Hey, problem solvers. Welcome to literacy. Um, let's review just for a moment what we've been talking uh, about in literacy lately. We've been talking about strategies that nonfiction readers use before and while reading a nonfiction text, right? We've talked about how nonfiction writers make connections to what they are reading. We think about things that are interesting to them that connect to the topic. Then we talked about how nonfiction readers preview the text before diving in. They use prior knowledge of their topic, right? Think about that prior knowledge. And they scan the text features of the text, like the pictures and the table of contents to get an idea of what they're about to learn before reading the text. Now I'm gonna add another strategy onto that list and it is looking at the text structure. Don't worry if that sounds confusing. I'm going to talk about what that means right now. So I wanna show you how it can help you determine what the most important part of a text is when you recognize how the text is structured. If you don't know the structure of a text, like if you can't tell how it's organized, it often feels like every single bit of information is equally important. But when you know the structure of the text, it's almost as if you were given a way to highlight some parts of the text that are extra important and you're able to recognize parts that you can kind of skim over. Let's find out how to do that. So before we go into reading a text, I wanna practice this strategy with a video. So we're gonna watch a short clip from a news story. And as we watch this, your aim is to um, do the same kind of strategies that nonfiction readers do. As soon as the video starts, you should be in your head thinking, okay, what do I know about this? What do I know about this topic? You should be able to, you, you should be thinking, why do I care about this? What connections can I make that make me care about this topic? And you should be thinking about the most important bits of information in the video, and you should be holding on to those bits of information. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and start the video. So all of this should be happening in your head pretty quickly as you read, as you read, as you watch the video. Make sense? All right. So again, think about uh, connections, preview, and pick out the most important bits of information. Let's dive in. A major success in the San Diego Safari Park in the form of an adorable baby rhino. He was born eight days ago in today. The news was provided to Cleveland. The birth is part of a worldwide effort for David. All right, let's pause here and think about what we watched so far. So what do we think the most important little tidbits of information from that video are? Well, I know that they're talking about an endangered species of rhino. I know that those rhinos are the only two of their species left on, on this earth. I know that the zoo is breeding them in order to save that species. I know I care about that because I care about animals. Okay, all right, let's think of how else 
you can think about the information presented there. Now, we're going to watch this clip again. But before we do, I want you to think about how the information in there is organized. You may be tempted to just think that it's in a very topic, subtopic kind of way. Just like think of our organization sheets when we took notes about our women in government project. We thought of the topic, which was Kamala Harris or Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren, and then we had subtopics and then details in each subtopic. Now that's a fine way to organize information, but it is not the only way. So I want to dive a little bit deeper and talk about the different ways that you can organize information. <sighs> like how do those bullets go together? It helps to keep in mind some common structures that you often find in nonfiction texts and some of the words that they use that clue us in. <laughs> I have a handy dandy little chart for us. Let's take a look. Ta-da! Nonfiction text structures. Let's quickly go over them. There's chronological, which means things that take place in order. So words that tell you you're reading a chronological text are first, then, next, after, finally, before, after, words that show you that things are happening in order, right? What about problem and solution? Those are texts that present a problem and propose a solution. Words that clue you in and let you know that you're reading not a uh, reading problem and solution are excuse me a problem is a solution is if blank then blank or so that what about cause and effect cause and effect are texts that talk about how something happens and then causes other things to happen. So words to look out for are because, since, reasons, then, therefore, so, and in order. Hmm? And then the last one I want us to focus on right now is compare and contrast. Words to look out for, <laughs> different, same, alike, similar, although, but, yet, or, those are texts that take two different things and talk to us about how they are similar and how they are different, something we've been talking a lot about this year. So with these text structures in mind, I want to go back to a video about Edward, the cutest rhino in the world, and I want us to try to determine which one of these structures um, the video is. So let's go. A major success at the Sandy Zoo Safari Park in the form of an adorable baby rhino. He was born 18 days ago, and today, the news was divided to see him. Over at this part of a worldwide effort to save an infant rhino species that is so endangered that only two left in the world. Todd McKinnon has been a deaf last season from tracking since the beginning, and he's looking at the next major program. Well, bingo. Do you hear what I heard? I heard that there is a huge problem with these rhinos and that the zoo proposed a solution to help the rhinos with their problem. So which structure is it? This is absolutely a problem and solution structure. Now, just like we determined that from watching the video, we'll be able to determine that from reading text. When we come together on Zoom very shortly, we're going to look at a couple different books and see if we can't determine which structure they are. Okay, <laughs> I will see you guys there. Thanks.